Hey everybody, James here, the guy with the jokes so dry you mistake them for your mama's pussy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We know I make your mama's wet. I thought we were due for another little channel update. It's been a minute. And with all that good, good rambling comes some video footage in the background. This time, we're playing Felix the Cat. It's got a lot of similarities with the last game I did for a channel update, Yume Penguin Monogatari. Uh, it's a platformer for the NES. It's really short. You begin the game by uh, having a little phone call with um, the bad guy who's got your girl. And it does things a little unconventionally for a platformer. So we're Felix, and we got our little bag of tricks, and you collect icons of your face. Collect enough of them, and you'll get either milk or hearts. A heart will transform your attack, and you'll go up a tier. It doesn't make it stronger, but it makes it different, and I thought that was kind of neat. And then when you have a form of attack above your basic one, you'll get a magic meter. And the milk refills your magic meter. If the meter depletes completely, or you take a hit, you will drop a tier. Until you can't drop any more, and then you die. It just it seemed kind of interesting to me. Might be worth checking out if you, if you like that kind of stuff. It's short, like I said, it took me about an hour to beat this game. And that means that I'll be splitting this up into two parts, so hopefully I'll do another channel update sooner rather than later, and you can see the rest of the game if that interests you. But for now, you just get the first half. And uh, let's, let's get into things. Let's talk about, you know, how things have gone since the last channel update. Last time... I mentioned that the next game I was going to do after that channel update, I was talking about a point-and-click adventure. And if you follow my channel at all, you may have noticed that did not happen. Even in that channel update, I mentioned that it would be a bit more slow, yeah, kind of quiet, just a more laid-back playthrough if I was going to do that point-and-click adventure game. And when I started to put work into it, I felt that it was a little too slow, a little too quiet, and I wasn't feeling it. And if I'm not feeling it, I can't really expect you guys to feel it either, you know what I mean? So I ended up looking into something else, and I checked out Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams. I had that sitting in my GOG library for a while, gave it a shot, it felt fun. It felt interesting. And I might be the only one that thought so, because views were not super great on that series. And I'm not, like, blaming anybody for that. You watch what you want to watch. But, of course, the thing that runs through my head is what about this series did people not really take an interest in? So, I'd love to hear from you guys. I've got some thoughts on my own. Um, well, I've got two thoughts. First thought is I just didn't present things as well as I could have, should have. I That's how I feel, honestly. It's not even like, uh, maybe this is it. That, I do feel that I didn't bring my A-game to that. Yeah, I went into doing that playthrough without the confidence that I should have, without really committing to a plan. And it was just a little... just not that well done, in my opinion. I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and if I feel like it wasn't that great... You know, I, I, I could have done things a little bit better. I could have gone in knowing what I wanted to do and really have that mindset all the way through to the end. I, I could have done a few things differently. Now, that's... that's that. If you watched it and you agree, then there we go. But it seems like a lot of people just didn't watch it, 
So it doesn't really matter what I did. It could have I could have called it Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, and the videos would just be, you know, me farting for 20 minutes, which would be kind of concerning. But you wouldn't know. So, <laughs> so the other thing that kind of comes across my thoughts is that maybe platformers are not the most fun thing for people to watch. I say as I, I'm trying to get you guys to watch a platformer right now while I ramble on. Go me. But in all honesty, I, I was looking at other videos of people doing platformers to see how they did playthroughs of them But when I was going into the game and along the ways. And I... It kind of seemed to me that views for platformers were not as high as the views for other games on people's channels. So that that was another theory of mine. A GAME THEORY! <laughs> but I would really love to hear your opinions on what you liked or didn't like about that. Uh, if you didn't watch it, why it didn't interest you? Because that helps me get a better idea of what to be doing moving forward. Around that same time that I was doing Gianna Sisters, uh, it went on a little bit longer than I was expecting, because I ended up having some computer issues uh, around uh, the end of the year. Long story short, it seemed to be something related to video, which is not a great problem to have when you make videos. And I'm one of those dweebs that purchases a pre-built system, and thankfully, because I am such a dweeb that does such a thing, I still had a warranty that was still good, talked to Dell, they couldn't diagnose it remotely, so I had to send my computer in. And I was without a computer for about a month. And communication wasn't super great with them during that period, I was getting more and more frustrated because they couldn't tell me what they were doing with the system, what the problem was, anything. I wasn't getting any information, and to go, like, any amount of time not knowing what the hell is happening with your computer that you need for things, it was getting frustrating and kept getting frustrating until it was finally resolved. And the way it was resolved was my computer was too old to get the replacement parts needed. It's, it's going on it was going on about six years. So they sent me a refurbished system that was more recent. And here I am on that system. And this thing is quite a beast. Um, you know, I, I not really in... I, I don't have the option at the moment to spend the money on a computer. But I was looking at what it would cost me, so I knew what I could not afford. And I built the, the computer, I set the specs and everything that I wanted, and it definitely was a lot of money. And the computer that I was sent as a replacement is pretty gosh darn close to the computer that I was looking at. So that's pretty great. Only downside is the warranty for my old computer carries over to this one, and my warranty expired shortly after getting this all resolved great for getting it resolved, but just not great for moving forward. If anything goes wrong with this computer, I'm kind of SOL. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that will not happen. You know, um... But yeah. <laughs> so I managed to finish Gianna Sisters after that, and I moved on to Tony Hawk's Underground. I just finished that up. I wasn't quite sure about revisiting the Tony Hawk series so soon, but I was trying the game out and it felt good and I just, I felt like doing it. And it also didn't hurt that, you know, looking at the traffic to my videos, the most watched one 
at this time was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. So I thought, okay, yeah, I'll do this. There'll probably be more people that want to watch this than Gianna Sisters. That'll make me feel good. And it did. <laughs> so thank you. I... Also, I went pretty hard with that game. I, I did a lot of practice and did a lot of other stuff. I did videos for the levels from the first three Tony Hawk games to kind of replace the old playthroughs I did for those games. And I challenged myself to get all the gaps in the levels for Tony Hawk's Underground while I was doing all of the goals on the hardest difficulty. And it felt good. I, I had a clear idea of what I wanted to do. I followed through on that. It really set the tone for the entire playthrough. And I, I think the uh, playthrough of Tony Hawk's Underground and Gianna Sisters is like night and day. They're totally different. Not because one was blind and the other one was practiced. Just the way that I felt doing them. And I think that was reflected in people enjoying that playthrough. But again, you know, tell me what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Uh, while you tell me, I'm just gonna take a little drink here. Ah, Crystal Light Iced Tea. They, they owe me money now for plugging them. That's the rule, right? <laughs> um... Anyway, some more things that have been going on. I wanted to look at improving my mic quality. For the past decade, I have been using the Microsoft LifeChat 3000. It's a wired headset. It costs like 20, 30 bucks depending on the day of the week. And I like the quality of the mic. But I don't like that it's wired, because I have gone through more of these headsets than I can count. Because that wire always manages to break. I'll get a few months out of a headset, on average, before I have to replace it. And there's like a two-year warranty on these things, but the way Microsoft does that is... You need to send the product in first, and then they will send you a replacement as after they verify that it's, you know, under warranty, that what happened to it is, you know, whatever. And, you know, when you need a headset, you don't want to go for a week or two without something. And that's a week or two if you're lucky. They, they said that it would take like seven to ten business days, I think. Don't quote me on that, I'm not looking right at the email. But the short of it was, it was better for me to just keep buying these to replace the broken ones than it was to try and go through that whole song and dance of getting a replacement under warranty. But now that I have a backup, I might actually be able to do that. Anyway, was looking at new options, and I tried two new options. The first was the PlayStation Platinum Gaming Headset. It's a wireless headset. It has a hidden dual microphone. And it sounds like this. It's not super great. You know, it's a little on the muffled side, as if I was wearing a mask, or, um, like, phone quality, talking on the phone. Just not as crisp and clear as I would really want. Um, even with filtering, this is the best that I can make it sound. It actually sounds a bit worse without filtering. And also, you might hear a little bit of, like, a mechanized tinny noise popping in and out. That's the air conditioner. And I can't filter that out completely. I, I have much better luck with that on my other headset. So, yeah, I, I don't think this works 
but it is wireless, which is great. It has a 10 to 12 hour battery charge. The audio that comes through the headphones is really good. I just wish the mic was better. Now, I also got a Blue Yeti microphone for Christmas. Uh, yeah, Christmas was like forever ago. And I've done experimenting with it, but the best I've managed to do is to make it sound like this. Um, my voice comes through nice and clear, but so does everything else. Every little sound. Um, again, this is with filtering. In the background, you can hear my air conditioner. Uh, if I click the mouse, you can hear that. If I'm typing things on the keyboard, you can hear that. If I move in my chair, you can hear that. Just a lot of noise. Uh, if a, if a, a fruit fly farts in the next room, you can hear it. And again, this is with filtering. This is what it sounds like without filtering. I I don't know. Uh, I thought that this would work out better. And I just... Uh, not sure what to do with it. It might be good for post-commentary stuff. But then you've got just a pretty big difference in audio quality for me doing, like, post-commentary and me, you know, recording and doing commentary at the same time, which I think is not really ideal. If I could find a way to make this work in combination with, you know, using the wireless headset for the sound of the headphones, that would be great, but at, at the moment I just have not been able to figure that out. So I'm sticking with my old headset. And I've wasted a lot of money on stuff. Oh well. But you know, you go ahead and you tell me what you think of the audio quality of those things. Maybe it bothers me more than it bothers you. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, as they say. If you have any other suggestions for something that I could talk into, I'd love to hear it. Basically, I would love to have a wireless headset. If I can't have a wireless headset, then a wireless headphone with a mic, an external mic of some sort that has some decent quality that doesn't pick up everything. <laughs> or maybe there'll be a way for me to make this Blue Yeti work for me. We'll see. I just don't think I'm in the environment that is suitable for it at the moment. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Now let's talk about what you guys have been up to. So somewhere along the line, I managed to cross 100 subs. In fact, at the time of this recording, I've got 125, 126, something like that, and that is pretty awesome. So, I can't say thank you enough. So I won't even bother. Screw you. Haha, <laughs> no, just kidding. Seriously, getting 100 subs was one of my milestone goals that I set for myself in feeling like I was on the path to making this a thing. You know, I've talked about making this a thing, taking this seriously, seeing what I can do with it, and that was one of my goals. Just seeing if I could get 100 subs, and I did. And that is really amazing, and I love you guys so much. You not only tolerate my bullshit, but you want to be notified of when more of that bullshit is out there for you to check out. That's kind of crazy to me. And, again, I love you guys for it. So thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Like I said, can't say it enough. 
Oh, talking about milestones, uh, we do have to talk about some more YouTube malarkey. Towards the beginning of the year, YouTube changed the requirements for becoming a partner. It used to be you just needed 10,000 total views. And now you need 4,000 hours watched on your channel over 12 months. And you need 1,000 subscribers. Um, getting the 10,000 views, getting the partner program was another one of my milestones that I was hoping to get. Not, not that I was like, oh right, as soon as I get this, I'm going to make the big bucks or something. But it would be able... It, it would allow me to basically see what was available to me. To get a better sense of what it meant to make this channel a thing. And they moved the goalposts on me. <laughs> around the time of that announcement, I was actually somewhere around 9,000-something views. I, I've now crossed over. I'm at, I think, 15,000 views, which is also awesome. Thank you. But, yeah, I felt like I was getting close to that... And then YouTube was like, no. I understand why they did it. If you don't, just search up Frozen Elsa and Spider-Man or something. And you'll, you'll understand why YouTube wanted to stop giving money to everybody. Ah, well, um, as you can see, it didn't discourage me too much. I'm still here, but now it's been about a year since I've been doing this stuff. And I'm going to take another little drink of this good, good crystal light iced tea. Mmm, powder and water. So yeah, I started putting videos back up towards the end of August, beginning of September. But I was doing a lot of pre-work, getting everything set up, designing things, doing pictures, music, writing, all that good, good stuff. So I've been working at this for just about a year, give or take a couple of days. I mean, we're already into the second week of July. Happy 4th, by the way, and happy 3rd for my Canadian friends. I think that's the right day. I hope I hope that's the right day. But, anyway. I've just been trying to reflect on what has happened with this channel, and I'm trying to think about what the future holds for this channel. I think it's great that I've got as many subs as I do. I think it's great that I've got as many views as I do. But when I'm trying to look at the bigger picture of what I want this channel to hopefully become, I worry about if I'm on that path or not. You know what I mean? Like, is this a good start to getting where I wanted to be? Or is this really bad and I should stop investing so much into doing these videos and find something else to do? Not, not necessarily stopping this stuff, but just not worrying about it as much. And, and I don't know, maybe... Maybe it's still too early to tell. It's probably too early to tell because I can't tell. Or maybe I'm just stupid. Or something. And it's painfully obvious what I should be doing. But I don't know. I, I don't know what I should be doing moving forward. You know, I'm... I'd like to think I'm doing the things I'm supposed to be doing. I, I'm trying to have a brand here, you know, James plays games, that's me! And, um, having consistency, I've now tried to go forward with a plan of having videos uploaded on Fridays. Not every Friday, that's my loophole. But, just having that day, so you guys know, Friday coming around, 
time to check out my channel. See if there's something stupid up. And uh, I'm just not sure really what else to do. I'm trying to be friendly and talk to people and engage with you guys. Not out of obligation, but because I enjoy it. I'm not... I'm not videotaping dead bodies. I'm not calling anybody a racial slur in a heated gaming mode. Maybe that's why I'm not as popular. Maybe I should be doing those things. I don't know. You tell me. But I, I feel like I'm on... I'm, I'm on... The, the, I'm staying the course. I just don't know if I'm going too slow on that course. But you guys have given me a lot of things to think about in the past. Hopefully you will have some things for me to think about now. Maybe. If you don't, that's cool. But I always like hearing from you guys and talking to you about this kind of thing. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, we're going to be getting to the end of this video soon, and then we'll do a part two somewhere down the line. So the last thing is, for those of you who have watched up to this point, that means you're dedicated, and you love me, and you want to hear everything I have to say. So this is where I plug stuff, begging you for money and attention. <laughs> Uh, again, I've got my Twitter. I like having people follow me on Twitter. I, I post dumb shit there. I talk about what's going on with videos and my channel and stuff. I, I, I just post stuff. And you like it, maybe. You got something to say about it, maybe. Just, it's another outlet for me to just be chill with you guys. It's a, it's an extension of this channel. I've got my Twitch. I haven't really done anything with Twitch lately. I, I was thinking that I might start that up again soon, do something again. I had been doing a playthrough of Deponia. I have two videos of those streams up. You can go watch them. I was thinking of finishing that at some point. But we'll see. Like I said last time, to stream on Twitch, you gotta have an audience to watch your stuff. And that's, you know, still a struggle for me. Um, I've also opened up a Curious Cat account. And what that is, it's just one of those sites where you can send in questions to somebody to answer. And you don't need an account yourself, you can send messages anonymously, but if you want me to know who you are, you might want to have an account, or you might want to sign them or something. You could also ask me questions on Twitter, or in the comments section right here, right, right, right down there. Because I was thinking that if people cared enough to hear more of my just talking nonsense, that I might do like a Q&A &A video or something like that, or maybe a Q&A series. Maybe the second half of this Felix game will be answering some questions. Who knows? But I just thought that might be interesting, and if it interests you, go ahead and hit me up on there. All the links will be in the description for the stuff I'm talking about. The last couple of things is I still have my PayPal link. If you feel so inclined to support me with money, it helps me to live. I like living. Although, some days, you look at the news. And... Anyway, um, I also started a Patreon account. I have a Patreon. I believe it's open and functional, but I haven't fleshed it out too much, and I, I'm not sure what I should flesh it out with. I don't really know what incentives interest you guys. So if you want to tell me what things you would sign up to a Patreon for, that'd be cool. And in the meantime, it's just there, and I, I don't expect anything 
but if you are so inclined, then yeah, I got I got these things available to me. And that's that. I'm not sure of anything else to talk about. Um, future projects, how about that? I've got a game that I picked out. Fingers crossed everything will go well with that. That should be starting up the week after this video going up, or the week after that. And it's actually kind of like a point-and-click adventure game, minus the point-and-click. It's more of a sneak-and-shoot adventure game. And uh, it seems kind of interesting. I'm going in blind. Hopefully I won't regret that decision. But we'll see. It seemed like an interesting game, the stuff that I've recorded so far. I've, I've enjoyed it. And hopefully you'll enjoy it too. And if not, well, screw you. Just kidding. You know I love you, right? You know I don't mean it, baby. Now come here and give me some sugar. Oh, yeah. Kisses for those of you that stayed till the end, okay? Okay. So that does it for me. I will cut this video off at the end of this level. And then sometime we will go see the other half of this game. Hopefully it won't be too long. We'll see what happens, right? Right. Okay, thank you for listening to this. I hope you guys have been enjoying what I do. I hope you guys will keep enjoying what I do. And if you have ideas for how to make it more enjoyable, I really want to hear from you, okay? So I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.